Hey guys, welcome back to 30 days to your first website design, a Tuts Plus premium course. I'm Ian Yates and today we're going to continue with the theory section of this series by looking at content. Let's take a quick look at what we're going to be covering in this video. That's quite a straightforward one this one. We're first going to take some examples of what we should be including before we look at some examples of what we shouldn't. And then typically before we jump into the next video, I'm going to set you an assignment. Okay, let's look at the first point then. What should we include? Well, this is another one of those lovely subjective questions. What we should or shouldn't include is, of course, entirely down to the type of site we're designing. A blog, a landing page, a portfolio, a web shop, they all need completely different types of content. There are, however, common elements which we can usually apply across the board. Firstly, arguably most importantly, is identity. From the moment someone enters your website, they should know who or what they're dealing with. So make sure there's at least some kind of logo or branding. Getfinch.com is a great example of how to do this without beating around the bush. No messing about. A subtler and more common approach can be seen on the clear left website. Logo in the top left, where the eye usually enters the screen, and we'll talk about that more later in the series, backed up by branding colors. Our logos are often located in the top left, and they usually serve as links back to the home page. This is what we call a convention, an aspect of web design which people have come to expect over time. That's also something we're going to touch upon later in the series. <coughs> Excuse me. Next up, you'll more often than not need to include primary navigation, and usually immediately visible somewhere above the fold the fold being the area of a site visible without having to scroll. And the website we're going to be working on is going to be a corporate website. We're going to need to make sure that our brand is clear, that our contact information is readily available, and that our message is delivered. And we can deliver that message with strap lines, mantras, perhaps even testimonials from happy customers. We'll also have secondary content. Now that might not be in your face upon arriving, but can be found if needed, such as an About Us page, for example. Now, in order to analyze specifically what we want to include, we'll first have to clarify our goals, and we'll be looking at those during the next video. For now, though, let's look a little further into what we shouldn't be including. Well, part of what we should have in our website is meaningful content. And while the content itself might not be your responsibility, it will likely be down to a copywriter or the client, you do have responsibility for displaying it properly. People, and that includes you, tend to scan web pages, not read them from start to finish. What you should therefore avoid including is masses of unnecessary content. Keep the body text to the point so that visitors aren't turned off by huge paragraphs and long lines of text. If they're looking for more detailed information, make it easy for them to go and find it. Secondly, Avoid anything which can be counted as visual noise. Anything which distracts the user from performing whatever action you expect of them. MrBottles.com is an extreme example here, but visual noise can be as subtle as unnecessary images or striking text on an advert. Now that leads me to my next point. Adverts. If a website is funded partially or wholly through ad revenue, you'll need to find somewhere for those ads to live. They need to be a valid part of the site, otherwise nobody's going to click them and they won't generate any income. But make sure they don't take precedence over the genuine content of the website. Lastly, and this may sound obvious, don't include anything for the sake of it. Don't fill the footer with social links if the client doesn't have any use for them. And don't animate the logo just because you can. Okay, it's time for some further reading. I want you to take a look at this article on Minimalist Web Design by Kurt Ziegler. It's another great web design touch article, and in it he talks about removing clutter, which elaborates further on what we just talked about with visual noise. Now, as a little assignment before you jump into the next video, I want you to think about our corporate website and ask yourself the following questions. What is it you want the users to see when they arrive on the site? Secondly, what do you believe should be the secondary content on our website? That's it. Simple as that. Okay. Next time on 30 days to your first website design, 
we're going to be looking at goals. This is Ian Yates, and from all of us here at Touch Plus, thanks again for listening.